This is lesson three in our domain on astronomy called stars. At the end of this lesson, you're going to be able to describe stars. Before we get started with our reading, you will need to be familiar with a few vocabulary words. The first one is dusk, the time of day just after sunset when the sky is not yet dark. Meteor, a rock that flies through space, sometimes mistakenly called a shooting star. Stars, hot balls of gas that give off light and heat. Telescopes, tube-like tools with lenses and mirrors used for magnifying objects in space in order to observe them. And universe, everything in space taken together, including planets, stars, and space itself. When nighttime comes, you can say goodbye and goodnight to the sun, our daytime star. And you can say hello to all the millions of other stars that shine in outer space. Remember, the stars are always out there. Outer space does not just disappear during the day and then reappear at night. You can see those stars at night because the sun's light is no longer shining on your part of the earth, but the stars are still always there. At dusk, just after the sun has set in the west, but before all of its light has faded like the picture you see now, the very first stars of the night appear. One, two, three, and then more and more. The darker it is, the more stars you can see. If you live in the city, then you can't see as many stars as people who live in the country can see. Lights in the cities brighten the night sky and make it very difficult to see the stars. Out in the country, however, and especially out in the wilderness, very far away from buildings, streetlights, and cars, the night sky seems to explode with glittery, twinkling stars. They may look small, but many of those stars that you see are actually incredibly large. Many stars are larger than our own sun, which, as you remember, is big enough to fit a million Earths inside of it. The stars look small because they are so far away, and the stars look like they're blinking, but they're actually shining steadily. The gases in our atmosphere cause their light to look like it's twinkling. Just how far away are these stars? Here's one way to think about it. If you put, if you, someone put you on the fastest rocket ship today and launched you into outer space, it would take you thousands of years about 73,000 years to be exact, to reach the nearest star beyond our sun. <laughs> That's pretty far away. However, you can still see the light from that massive hot star, even though it looks more like a tiny twinkling diamond here on Earth. At night, astronomers study the stars. Astronomers are scientists who study outer space and stars. Astronomers work in observatories, which are buildings where large telescopes are housed. This is one of the observatories. Observatories are built high up on hills or mountaintops, where there are no buildings or trees blocking the telescope. The roof of the observatory is designed so that it can open and allow the giant telescope inside of it to move up and down and all around without bumping into anything. This is the inside of that very observatory we just saw in the last picture. Astronomers need really big, really powerful telescopes to do their work. This is the kind of telescope you can find inside an observatory. That's a mighty big telescope. But you don't need a massive telescope and a fancy mountaintop observatory to enjoy the wonders of stargazing, or the act of just looking at the stars. If you want to get a better look at the stars or a closer look at the moon, a pair of binoculars will do the trick. Or you can use a telescope like this one. You'd be surprised by all of the different things that you can see through a telescope. Through careful study, astronomers have figured out many interesting facts about stars, even though no person is able to travel and study a star up close. Astronomers have learned that some stars are older than other stars. Some stars are hotter than other stars. 
Some appear red through the telescope and others appear blue. It's what we call a redshift blue shift and it's how we can decide how old stars are. Stars change color depending on how hot they are and how hot a star is depending on its age, size, and other factors. But you do not need a telescope in order to appreciate the wonders of outer space. If you look at the sky long enough on any given night, you will eventually see a meteor, or as we have tended to call it, a shooting star. It is not actually a star. A meteor is simply a rock that flies through space. It appears as a streak in the sky before it disappears in the blink of an eye. At first glance, a meteor may look like a star that is literally falling through the sky. However, stars do not move like that. Meteors, although they are sometimes called shooting stars, are not stars at all. They are chunks of rock that are flying through the atmosphere. There are billions of meteors out there. Some meteors are quite large, but most are tiny, between the size of a grain of sand and a baseball. Meteors are whizzing around all over the place in outer space. Occasionally, a meteor crashes towards Earth. Before it can hit Earth's surface, however, the meteor crashes into Earth's atmosphere. For a space rock, hitting the Earth's atmosphere is like a person running right into a brick wall. Except the atmosphere doesn't stop the meteor. Except the atmosphere does not stop the meteor. The meteor hits the atmosphere at an incredible speed and keeps moving through the atmosphere. As it does so, it generates intense heat. The meteor burns up as it enters the uppermost part of Earth's atmosphere, creating a streak of light, or as we've tended to call it, a shooting star. Occasionally, bits and pieces of meteors survive their trip through the atmosphere and fall to Earth. This is very rare, but it does happen from time to time, and it is possible to find pieces of them on the ground. When part of a meteor survives the trip through the atmosphere and lands on Earth, the meteor becomes a meteorite, or space rock. The meteorite in this picture is probably not the most exciting rock that you've ever seen, but it is pretty amazing to think that it came from outer space. Sometimes, by studying meteorites, scientists discover new types of rock that do not exist on Earth. Outer space is a strange and wonderful place. By studying the stars, planets, and other objects in space, astronomers have learned many things about this incredible place called the universe, of which we and our planet Earth are but a teeny tiny part. Feast your eyes on this massive star cluster for a moment and imagine if you can the incredible number of stars and the incredible distances between us and them and how much there is for us to learn about our universe for instance look at the very center of this photo there in the middle is a little cluster of 14 bluish stars magnified right here there in the middle and added together. Astronomers estimate these 14 stars combined are over 20,000 times larger than our Sun. That's so huge it's hard to think about and that's just 14 stars out of all of the stars in this photo. So we've been introduced to the concept of stars and how there are still stars out in the universe and just because our sun is out and we can't see them doesn't mean they're not there. They never go away. It's not just something we can turn off. They're constantly out there. And these stars are so, so, so far away. It would take thousands of years to reach them in the fastest rocket ship we have. They look small, but a lot of them are a lot bigger than our own sun. And we already talked about how we could fit a million Earths into our sun think about how big those other stars might be. If you need to go back and repeat anything in this lesson, please do so now. When you are finished, please return to Seesaw and do the activity for this lesson.